It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for the inaugural lecture this evening, Professor Abu Malik Simon. Professor Abu Malik Simon is a senior professorial fellow at the Urban Institute, University of Sheffield, and a visiting professor of urban studies at the African Center for Cities, University of Cape Town. His key publications include For the City Yet to Come, Urban Change in Four African Cities, Duke University Press, 2004, City Life from Jakarta to Dakar, Movements at the Crossroads, Rotledge, 2009, Jakarta, Drawing the City Near, University of Minnesota Press, 2014, New Urban Worlds, Inhabiting Dissonant Times, Polity, 2017, Improvised Lives, Rhythms of Endurance for an Urban South, Polity, 2018, and The Surrounds, Urban Life Within and Beyond Capture, forthcoming, Duke University Press. He will be delivering a lecture titled Spaciousness, Life at the Extensions. Although it is impossible to reduce the urban to a set of principles, logics, or processes, if it were possible to do this, then the production and problematics of spaciousness would be a key element, an elemental relation through which it would be possible to dis discern urbanization at work. However processual the experience of space may be, it cannot avoid its status as an entity, object, destination, or product. So here, spaciousness points to a characteristic that in many respects is self-referential, room to maneuver, where matters are opened up for new perspectives. While, building, while, while buildings or domains might be designated as spacious, spaciousness is a matter beyond proportionality, pointing to thick entanglements brokenness and unraveling all at the same time. The talk will consider how the extensions of the urban enable us to rethink what is spacious as a process of the continuous unsettling of inhabitation where the apparent forces shaping built and social environments are underlined by volatile undercurrents of strange alliances and temporary collaborations. A gentle reminder for all participants to remain muted through the lecture Please change your layout of the screen to focus or stage through the button on the top right corner of your screen for a better experience. Post the talk, uh, post the talk participants can raise hands and our team members will recognize you to ask questions. You can also put these questions on the Q&A option. Please remember to choose the all co-host option when you post your questions through the Q&A. The talk will be recorded for archival purposes use of derogatory or offensive language will attract strict action. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Abu Malik Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharana. Um, I'll just um, share the screen. Okay, for, if for any reason you can't, uh, you see it, just let me know, all right? Um, thank you, thank you so much for this, uh, this invitation to, uh, to participate um, in, uh, in this workshop. Um, I'm really glad to, really glad to be here. Um, what I, what I'm going to do today is to start with some, some space and some issues that you're probably familiar with, um, and then to think about those spaces, and then to try to unsettle some notions about them, uh, theoretically, uh, and then return back to a different set of spaces similar to the ones I started out with. So moving from, from Calcutta to Jakarta, uh, that sort of rethink the, these spaces having been troubled, having been unsettled, having, having been 
rethought in, in, in a particular in a particular way. So I want to start with um, uh, with some spaces that even even though it's not Chennai, um, there are probably spaces that are that are familiar to to all of you. Um, uh, wherever you're, wherever you are operating and, and living. Um, so I just take these kinds of uh, uh, these images from Rajahat and Bidhanagar um, in the in the east of uh, in the east of of Calcutta. Um, and I'm I'm interested in in the sense of what what these spaces what what are what are these spaces and what's the terms of spaciousness what are the terms of spaciousness here in what ways are they spacious what is the meaning of spaciousness in settings like this settings where increasingly uh, larger numbers of urban populations are are finding finding themselves. So what are the terms of spaciousness here? Well, on the one hand, there's a spaciousness that is related to the violence that is entailed in the assumption that that there was nothing there, or what was there is a kind of anachronism, uh, something whose time has come and gone. Uh, spaces that need to be rectified, spaces that are no longer useful, and so therefore available to a, a significant re remaking. Secondly, that in some ways the appeal of such spaces, you know, why, why is it that would one would want to invest in them? Why would, why would one want to be somehow located within them? So there's the sense that there's something that is uninterrupted, that's un unimp unimpeded, not to be contaminated or belabored with the intrusions or proximities of other ways of living. You, know, you don't have to deal with all kinds of people wandering around on, on, on the streets or uh, ways of life that somehow you don't know quite what to deal with or who are bothersome and intrusive. So. There's the sense of spaciousness here is, is this some, something un, unimpeded, not, not to be contaminated. Third, there is the kind of sense of, of a repetition, as if something is being prolonged and extended regard of the situation. So, for example, what I mean by this is that, you know, you go through these spaces and, and everything appears to be the same, you know, the same kind of look with with minor minor differences the same kinds of built environments simply being fractally replicated um, and all of which seems to address everything that one might need everything being immediately accessible you know so these kinds of super towns or mega developments where everything is there from leisure to work to shopping to recreation to you know um, but in the sheer repetition of these kinds of built environments is the sense of that something is being prolonged, continued, you know, related to what I, what I was talking about, not being impeded, interrupted, but here a kind of temporal trajectory which, which seems to suggest that, that somehow there is a kind of way of life now being established that will endure, that, that culminates, that will be... Uh, that won't be subject to the the volatilities and the 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 accidents or the uh, uncertainty of of urban life, and then fourthly, there's a sense of belonging to the world, uh, removed from messy entanglements in local situations. It's interesting that in the advertisements of many of these kinds of built environments, the advertisement says, you know, like buy here live here and be part of the world, you know? So in some senses that you, you, you leave the, the, the parochialism uh, and the particularities of one's nature 
in one's locale, by virtue of living and operating in these spaces, become part of a larger global, global, global community, removed from the messy entanglements of local situations. And then there is the sense of how they actually operate. Because in a way that a lot of these, a lot of these new built environments at the periphery, uh, at the extensions of, of urban regions, uh, have not come about through uh, concerted, coordinated uh, municipal planning uh, or consensual plan of development. Uh, and so they're subject to all kinds of stops and starts and incompletions. Some projects work, some don't. Some are started and then they, they, they remain incomplete for long periods of time. Um, and so in, in some sense that what's opened up in these, this kind of rhythm of, of uh, different kinds of actors, different kinds of uh, corporate forms, different kinds of money, different kinds of land deals that are, that are at work, is a sense that something that there's an in, in between space that there's an interstice which which enable certain kinds of projects to emerge from from the background uh, a range of unanticipated uses uh, a kind of uh, coming together of very different logics and ways of, of of doing things which oftentimes give these built environments a kind of strange appearance you know you're never quite sure exactly what what might be going on and then the the sense of what well, what are the mechanisms of production that are at work in terms of of, of making these of, of, of elaborating substantiating uh, making these built environments and of course here particularly for the for the in the in the calcutta situation perhaps in other places in india as well uh has been the the predominance of of special purpose vehicles uh particular apparatuses of of planning and implementation uh that somehow operate outside of of exclusively the public or private sector and they combine violent extraction seizure dispossession uh with a lot of uh, a lot of authority to circumvent existing regulatory frameworks circumvent the relationships among existing local authorities capture financial appropriations and in, in inward investments outside of the usual fiduciary accountability and procurement that is they bring all different kinds of money to the table in ways that oftentimes escape the, the, the normative mechanisms of, of accountability. Uh, at the same time, as, as others have noted, there, there is the intensification of, in some sense, customary local authorities and syndicates, syndicates that include labor brokers, construction material suppliers, um, that in some sense underpin local political power but also operate autonomously and so who are these syndicates and, and oftentimes they are composed of those that operate really outside of any kind of regulatory structure but becomes a ticket to respect and mobility on the part of a, of a supposed un underclass um, and again these are these are these are well documented by you know you know, respected Indian urban scholars such as Ratula Kundu and Sudeshna Mitra. Um, the, the importance of state guarantees, whereas the state doesn't really, or the state may have tried to develop these areas, usually it withdraws uh, from doing so, but rather guarantees a kind of lazy fair land market uh, operations um these you know to develop these kinds of super towns mega developments you need a lot of land and you need to put land together in, in large in large volumes so how you aggregate land um and where the pricing is dependent upon the guarantee rather around these guarantees rather than the state's capacity to 
to, to, to deliver. Then thirdly, um, it, it works the latent and structural vulnerabilities in existing social arrangements. That is, in some sense, it, 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 it's able to identify uh, particular kinds of um, social, caste, political, uh, sectoral tensions that are existing within the particular uh, compositions of village structures. I mean, who's who? Who was there before? I mean, these are this is these are oftentimes it's not on green field. It's not that there weren't communities there already. And in a way in which the the the, the production of these new spaces often depend on identifying and working through the kinds of tensions and vulnerabilities that, it, that are operative in existing social relations. Relations among those with historically elevated social status and those whose, whose new forms of accumulation is based on brokering, enforcing extrajudicial deals, alliances among local politicians, bureaucrats, developers, gangsters, sometimes reinforcing and sometimes remaking caste and regional lines. So in a way, a way, in, a way in which that, that these kinds of dispossessions are made possible through being able to both read and to instigate tensions and fractures within existing social landscapes. And then the notion of bypass urbanism, which you know I think everyone is familiar with, that the, that the National Highways Authority of India can bypass governance at local and metropolitan and regional scales. It can apply eminent domain laws, dispossess people in nature of communal and agrarian land, open up pathways for their transfer to private corporations. It can invent public narratives of economic urgency and of acting in the public's interest to bypass civil and judicial contestations, thus facilitating large scale free, free market kinds of initiatives. And I, I'm sure everyone is, 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 is familiar with this kind of move and, and the role that uh, the National Highway Authority plays in this process. So these are, these are some of the mechanisms of production which create these particular tropes or meanings of spaciousness in these kinds of extended urban regions uh, full of new spatial products and, and, and built environments. And so I want to step back then, step back a moment from, from the specificity of these kinds of areas and just quickly think about the kinds of uh, the kinds of conundrums or the kinds of questions about urbanization in general. And uh, I'll try to be quick about this particular aspect. Whereas if, if you look at the, 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 ur the urban or the, the contemporary urban or, the, or the, the modernist urban of the, of the Western, Western imagination, and I have to emphasize that because you know, the ur urban imaginaries have many different kinds of dispositions uh, informed by many different kinds of histories. But if you look at the urban as the manifold local Western modernity, it has expressed the, of the human to shape the actions of humans and materials alike. But as we all well know, the implications of such potency have substantially diminished the efficacies of the urban even as it would appear to luminously expand in all directions. So even though urban, urban growth seems to proceed uh, full speed ahead, uh, we well know the implications of that, uh, the implications in terms of, of, both, uh, of both climate change, uh, material exhaustion, and you know the intensified precarity of a larger numbers of the urban population. So we so we know we we we, we know the, the the results of this kind of imagination of urban modernity. And uh, as the, as the the Italian cultural theorist Franco Berardi emphasizes, 
that the the rescaling the rescaling of the important forces to one the level of planetary climate conditions and then secondly to the level of micro registers of biomes and toxins and viruses that these are registers which are increasingly are linked and articulated through particular forms of what he calls technical techno semiotic calculation so all of the kinds of regimes of, of algorithmic governance, interoperability, uh, all the ways in which the link between the planetary and the micro uh, are forged and elaborated, which seem to in themselves bypass the urban as a kind of mediating force or mediating space. Um, and what happens then in, 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 his, in his analysis is that this constricts the operations of politics as a means of constituting free citizens long affiliated with the city. So the idea of city life uh, being inhabited by um, responsible individualized citizens uh, free to make decisions uh, in, to maximize their, their own interest, but citizens also free to exert their own responsibility, their responsible action. And in some sense, this kind of politics is coming to an end uh, or, or under question. So for example, across many aspects of the, of the world and, and particularly the, the South, uh, youth appear less interested in rights or in citizenship. What they're more interested in is maneuverability and concrete material attainment. And by concrete material attainment, it's not the promises of state provision. It's not waiting for the state to provide. Uh, it's, not, it's not waiting for the, the state to uh, provide welfare or to create education uh, opportunities or to create more jobs or to, um, not interested in that. Not the promises of provisioning, not indebtedness, too often what we've seen in you know, places like South Africa and Brazil um, is the, in the sense the, the, the availing of, of opportunities for consumption. You can become middle class through being able to buy a car, buy a TV, buy a cheap house, but you go into debt forever and, and then what do you have? So there's the, the lack of interest in indebtedness. Rather a refusal to be governed and a refusal to, to behave, uh, to not be compliant, to not be good citizens, to not demonstrate the, the sort of individual freedom of, of urban, urban modernity. This seems to be something less and less uh, operative. Rather, the, the, the assumption is, is that the city is broken and that it's full of broken compacts, broken solidarities, broken households, broken connections, broken interdependencies. And in this brokenness, um, if, 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 the, if the neighborhood, you know, the neighborhood, the household, if, if one finds these settings increasingly broken, they're no longer able to sufficiently to provide care, provide a sense of coherence and stability. And within this kind of brokenness, then the importance then of the extensions. And not just in the sense of what, what of extend, extended urbanizations. Extensions, not just simply in what you've seen in terms of Salt Lake, in terms of the of of the of the of the of the extensions of Calcutta in, in, into the into the periphery. These are extensions, but but extensions not simply as the fractal replication, but extensions, entanglements of different locations, different ways of living, different games of getting by, different logics and identities of what any given place might be. So this is the kind of the sense of extensions that I'm 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 talking about. Um, we can, again, Salt Lake, these are extensions, and the kinds of extensions I'm talking about, if you really look under the hood of Salt Lake, you can find these kinds of extensions at work in the terms of an entanglement. But I, I, I mean, I'll come back more to this. 
and not the repair of brokenness, but brokenness as a default conditions that suggest its own possible ways of doing things. That is something being broken doesn't necessarily need to be fixed. Uh, something broken opens up certain kinds of possibilities of ways of doing things that were not possible when things were whole or all together. So the notion of extensions, not so much a place, but a process of extending across various lines, zones, functions, locations, identities, and, and temporalities. So in some sense, what are, what are, for example, a younger generation of urban residents, what, what are they left with? What are they faced? Well, they face that in some ways, the, the many parts of the, of the older urban core uh, are either unaffordable, uh, they've been remade, um, they're overcrowded, there's not enough housing, not enough opportunities. But what they face is that the new sites of affordable residents are unlikely ever to consolidate themselves into viable economic and social territories. Even, 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 even in these new built super towns and extensions, even if you, if you manage to come up with twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to be able to buy small little units somewhere on the outskirts of the city. Likelihood is that those houses are gonna fall apart in less than 10 years. Um, so the new places are never gonna be sufficiently consolidated. And pe where people are coming from is broken and what's left is simply remnants. So increasingly everyday life is being made mediating between that which will never be enough and this kind of, what is this kind of space? Um, where you can go, what's new will never really be able to take root and where you come from is being upended in some ways. So what, so in some ways, uh, the prospect of being settled, of settlement is less and less possible which is why, to a certain extent, and I'll come back to this later, uh, the emphasis on, on circulation, on moving. Keep moving, keep circulating, keep trying to find something uh, for now. Um, and in a way, these, these extensions, you know, they also body and circulation. I mean, basically what, what, I've, what I've just said, that, that bodies find the effort to stabilize uh, through consolidating place and acquiring access, assets and maximizing consumption, uh, offer an increasingly limited horizon. It's too much work, too much indebtedness, too much compliance, and increasingly social life, <coughs> excuse me, everyday social life is distributed across multiple locations and opportunities. You stay with your, your brother over here for a while, uh, then maybe you have an uncle over here, maybe you have threatened, you know, you're, you're moving across different kinds of um, households, different kinds of places. So the importance of, uh, of itinerary over emplacement. And so the urban becomes increasingly a constant recalibration of movement, constantly recalibrated by movement, even when people are stuck in place uh, and particular built environments adamantly hold on and, and remain the same. But even endurance is less a function of cemented ties, ties of people to place, but a continuous repositioning of a place. Uh, you know, that tea stall that has been there for 50 years. even though it may seem to be, you know, holding on in, in place, uh, that in some ways their endurance, their longevity depends increasingly on how they shift their relationships to a larger outside world through, uh, through, through, through both broken and brokered, uh, brokered deals. So quickly then, what, what, let me, to go, to, to, to think more closely about this notion of extensions, a quick history of space in the mod modernist city. So in some sense, space historically has been subjected to uh, the sense of perspectivism. 
both in the making of the subject and the object of power. And as you see in this, in this graph, you know, the, the, the basic way, the basic sort of design of the modernist city, um, uh, creating dimensions through identifying a kind of, va of vanishing, the vanishing point where all lines converge to create the notion of, of, a, of a sense of, whoops, uh, a sense of spaciousness uh, within a kind of confined, confined parameters. And when I, when I, what, what, what's important here is the sense that, um, that what this does is separate out the individual body from the social body, is the premise of the vanishing point from which perspectivism is imposed and the city congeals. So in some ways, the notion of the individual, that free individual, that free citizen, that sense of, a, of an urban dweller that in the end uh, is responsible for him or herself, despite whatever ties there are, match it to it, is constructed through this very notion of the, of of the, of the of the modern city, with the sort of uniformity uh, and or ident the uniformity uh, or identity of constituent elements, the notion of the orthogonal, the equidistant units of analysis, and 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 so forth, and the way in which the geometry of power is expressed in the very material form of of the urban, the way in which urban modernist urban power has always operated to in some ways impose this kind of separation out of the individual from, uh, from a, a sense of, 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 of collective, uh, collective uh, identity. And the way in which one thinks about this is, is, is it, within con contemporary black critical thought uh, as expressed by the, the, the legal theorist, Denise Vera da Silva, when she talks about spaciousness as difference without sep separ separability, what, 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 is, what is meant by this? So if in some sense, the, 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 the exercise of a certain kind of modernist urban power was to de-link the individual from living through primarily his or her participation in a kind of socialness, a kind of collective life, and to be individuated as the kind of object of rule and of governance, and to whom the state would direct its governance in terms of, of the individual citizen. How was this notion of separation reinforced? How was it, how was it buttressed? And here the notion of property. Property is the basis of such separation. Um, because property belongs to someone. So, I mean, even though, I mean, as we well know, and as my friend Solomon Benjamin has well documented, there are many different forms of property, many different forms of holding land and property. At the core of the kind of modernist urban Western notion, uh, property was the basis of, 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 of enclosing and buttressing and substantiating the notion of the individual inhabitant. Uh, but property was always something in need of development. Uh, possession of something always had to be continuously demonstrated. I mean, as we well know, you know, metropolitan governments often punish people who own property and just hold on to it and don't do anything with it. You know, property is something to be developed. You have to do something with it in order to demonstrate one's worthiness to be an owner of that property. So property always meant a kind of taming of the land, the imposition of disciplinary, disciplining maneuvers exerted by the owner. Um, and particularly within, for example, the, 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 the US, uh, the imprecation of the property form on the body of, of blackness through slavery made that body available to the coercive force possession required to impose a specific disposition of both body and land to detach it from its organicity and, 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 eco and ecology. 
So of course, slavery was the was the was the perfect example of the way in which the body could be turned into property, property detached from any kind of genealogy, any kind of particular organic connection to land, to place, uh, and then to be used in the Americas to basically def help define the notion of property, uh, uh, of, of private property. And, and so particularly within the sort of Western ethos, coercion was necessarily upholding liberty for in some sense, separation was always threatened by the instabilities of maintaining bodies and terrain as something detached and individualized. So even, even though you, you have a piece of paper that says, this is my, this is my property, um, you, you continuously have to work on it in order to hold on to it. Um, and so this is a kind of act of, of, of coercion. So in some sense, what, what Frere de Silva tries to argue is that property is the constriction of spaciousness. It reifies freedom in terms of self-possession. And self-possession is always something that's wary of the possibilities of being possessed by, by other forces. So this notion of the, of, of the white citizen as in possession of himself um, was key to the notion of, uh, of, of urban modern citizenship, uh, individualized citizenship, uh, materialized through this notion of, of, of private property, property that always needed to be developed and developed by force. Um, and so what, 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 so what Ferrer argued is that we have to think about the, 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 the notion of differences without separability, uh, the way in which uh, differences provide a kind of resource for each other uh, that is not regulated or not organized in terms of of, of, of property. So in some sense, the, the, the end of urban modernity that is based on the sort of individual property self, in some way, how do you, how do you restore urbanization as something else beyond simply uh, the, the locus of, separate, of separability? How do you make the urban spacious uh, once again? And so to the, to the notion of the, of the extensions. And the extensions as something uh, which are, uh, rely upon a kind of sense of intense artificiality, not the model of sort of organic communities. It's not the resolution of conflicting tenure regimes and practices and agenda, but it's the simultaneous existence of, of these differences of technical artifacts rather than social representations per se. It's like the, to think about the extensions of the, uh, of the urban, like one uses putting, putting in extensions of hair. The, the hair is almost usually artificial, even if it is real hair, it's a kind of artifice that you attach and detach from the, your, your or, organic hair to create particular kinds of, to create particular kinds of possibilities. So I'm thinking about extensions in terms of the way and different way in which different artifacts are, are brought to the table and what they can do, what they can do with each other. And then taking a, a slide from, from, from Sali, um, the way in which one can think of extensions as a kind of um, blur between different kinds of situated histories, uh, where particular forms of building residence uh, get extended into particular kinds of commerce on the street and where particular kinds of commerce on the street are also extended into particular kinds of residences. And so they all entail different kinds of logics of operations, different kinds of tenures, but they all in some sense work are extensions of each other in way, again, you, again, it's this, Sally's illustrating here this notion of differences without separability. Um, you can't distinguish these kinds of, 
of operations of, 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 of the apartment, from the storage place, from the hawker cell, from the transport driver. Um, they, they are, they are ex extensions of each other. Uh, differences without separability, but they, they, they are differences because there are different kinds of actors and different kinds of tenure regimes and situated histories at, at, at work. And so to look then, you know, quickly at going to, to extended Jakarta uh, in a situation which I, I, I know better than, than, than Salt Lake, um, but I said I was going to return to a different kind of field, but similar to the situation in, 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 in Salt Lake. And here, here one sees within the, you know, so Jakarta now is the, a, purportedly the largest urban region in the world with close to 33 million uh, people within the, within the larger region. Um, it has expanded uh, substantially and, and rapidly in, in the directions that it can away from the, from the sea. And so I'm, gonna, I'm going to look, most of the images come from uh, a place called uh, Chikarang, uh, where uh, a, a, a good friend and colleague of mine, Mia Irawati, has been working for, for some time. And here, there are, I want to emphasize that the way in which discrete components of built environments at the extensions, the way they circulate through, e through each other. And by this, what, what I mean circulate is the way in which they, they, they intermingle across various databases, spreadsheets, future scenario plans, and tiers of securitization. So what I, what I mean is that what you see in this image, these these new these new buildings are not just new buildings. They're 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 also objects and items that find themselves on all different kinds of databases and spreadsheets. They uh, there's different kinds of money being brought to the table in order to invest in them uh, that that oftentimes have nothing to do with you know how this act building is actually used or whether it works or not. And so at times it's really difficult to tell when you look at all these new buildings and, 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 and industrial zones coming up, the extent to which the effectiveness is a slate of hand that's attained through, you know, accounting systems, financialization, or whether or not they are having real relationships on the ground. You know, does the new factory that's being built you know, generate enough of a workforce that's going to uh, have workers buy apartments in these buildings and shop at new complex. I mean, what's going on in the in in the computer? What's going on in the spreadsheet? What's going on in this kind of virtual world of financial accounting and the relationships there? It's sometimes difficult to match in terms of what's being actually related and integrated on the ground. And that's, well, that's because even a kind of superficial look at super towns and industrial estates and affordable housing projects, they point to large amounts of vacancies and undercapacity, of continuously reworked financial infusions and structural purposing of built environments. I mean, the image that you see in this photo has been uh, subject to at least five different consortiums of development uh, it's been refinanced uh, several different times. It's not complete. It's not known when it'll be complete, but yet it still continues to exist. Um, it, it's being used in some ways that are uh, not not oftentimes really really clear. So what you get the sense of is when you go through these sort of large industrial estates, these new buildings, these, uh, even to the, to the sort of lower middle class, you know, small little pavilions, you know, every house looks the same and there's thousands of them. It's really not clear because it's sort of half full and half empty. So you don't know quite where it's, where it's um, you don't know quite where things are, are headed. 
So functioning across very different kinds of timelines, everything that one assesses falls under the belief that inevitably and eventually things will work according to plan because the plan itself, even though when specifying the precise ways in which these different kinds of properties and projects are gonna be used and interrelated, itself builds on the obsolescence specifications. So when building environments don't work, it's not that you give up, you build more. You simply surround that which doesn't work with all kinds of new things because thinking that if you're going to you surround it with new things, then that thing that isn't working will then really work. So this becomes the kind of uh, logic of, 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 of development. Not so much concern with whether something works now or works in the terms in which it is specified. Financial things will work because we're changing the interrelationships of what's on the ground so much and so substantially that eventually something is going to have to going to have to happen. Uh, basically, I I, I I just have, have said this. So, you know, they, the, these new spatial products, uh, they occasion a continuous repurposing that at times to be invades these failures and stoppages, which will eventually assume their new purpose. A purpose that is yet to be defined, but nevertheless is viewed again by officials, planners, and entrepreneurs as inevitable. So in the absence of any overarching regional planning, development and governance framework, as is in the case of Greater Jakarta, benefits and losses are distributed unequally and with little attention to the potential complementarities and duplications of built environments and infrastructural inputs. It's as if, you know, it's as if you know, 100 kinds of players are playing around in nearly the same sandbox, but they're not really, they're just doing their own thing and not really concerned with what anyone else is, is, is doing. Um, affordable housing complexes built by developers quickly vacate management responsibilities to municipal authorities who are largely unwilling to take on that responsibility. And so these areas become quickly desolate, even as households continue to have to pay off the, the debt. So the developer will build stuff then leave the scene saying, okay, the municipality, it's your responsibility to provide the, the, to continue to provide the services. The municipality doesn't want to, or does so begrudgingly and half-heartedly. And so you have very erratic provisions, if at all, uh, and people are stuck with so-called assets that don't mean anything. And, and as a result, then many housing rentals and purchases uh, rather become short-term speculative investments that are subleased out for various purposes and lengths of, of, of stay. So who buys these things are oftentimes rarely those who actually, um, who actually occupy them. Um, At the same time, um, who's, 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 as I said before, the, the, because the, the urban cores become um, more unaffordable, there are large numbers of evictions, uh, or there's the sense on the part of urban residents that their particular locations and ways of life don't prepare them adequately for dealing where they think the city is going. So they have this sense of, well, even though it may work for me where I am, I got to do something different because soon this is not going to work. And then I'm going to be left behind. So I need to act and act quickly before everyone else begins to act. And therefore, things become affordable or not available. And so what you have is a kind of growing, unsettled population whose makeup includes both migrants less able to identify vi viable footholds in the region, migrants from coming from the outside, and refugees from the urban core. And these unsettled, faced with increased property taxation, 
imminent eviction or forced buyouts or depreciating housing assets often impulsively mobilize funds to acquire flats, hostel residencies, or cheap house rentals, or even house purchases as temporary destinations or potentially fungible assets. These assets are viewed as capable of underwriting the buying of time or where the acquisition becomes one node or component of itineraries of accumulation that are distributed across a wider territory of operations. That is what I mean here is that the, 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 the objective is, is not so much to acquire something as a destination. I'm going to put my life here, but rather much more short term is where, where can I generate some money from? Uh, so you, you, you acquire something with the speculation that you can rent it out or resell it or quickly make some bucks and put that money somewhere else somewhere else that you that might you think might be more useful or viable in the in the long run so there's this overwhelming sense of kind of short termism short termism so you defer commitment to a particular location in favor of moving around working with the angles deriving as much quick benefit uh, as possible now many do intend to move permanently to to into the super towns or the new developments at some point but at some point and that point is always being pushed forward uh pushed back in in in, in time you know the faith in these new developments remains largely abstract including that all important contingency of investor confidence and we all know the way in which investor confidence can come and go and therefore, you know, the, the land prices, the price building prices of opportunities can us, you know, over, over, overnight. So there's a wide range of actors that don't know very much about where things are headed on the basis of what's actually taking place on the ground. But again, they retain this sense that inevitably something will happen. Um, and again, it's 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 with a great deal of kind of uh, of ambivalence and uncertainty uh, of whether these things are going to work or don't work, uh, whether they even work now or or, or 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 don't work now. And so I'm I'm particularly interested in in what are the sort of subaltern uh, possibilities uh, of this. And and here I'm just going to you know read a a, a quick little. Uh, aphorism uh about about this uh about this uh, this area in the east of jakarta so along the the raised embankment of an irrigation canal that now separates corporately held agricultural land from the almost magical appearance of the new super city uh mayakarta intended to to house a half a million new residents Residents that are originally from the island of Madura, across from the Indonesia's second largest city of Surabaya, have long operated from hundreds of makeshift compounds with their various assortments of junk found in stolen items, including steel beams, bags of concrete, broken door frames, thousands of bolts and screws dismantled from who knows how many infrastructure projects. The Maduris are renowned as artisans of the useless and providers of what anyone needs for almost any kind of project. The Maduris are the consummist archivists, ar ar archivists. They rarely get rid of anything and they talk about and arrange their wares in such a way as to propose interconnections among things that might often seem outlandish and impossible but nevertheless to an audience that seems to take many of these propositions sufficiently serious to maintain these archivists in business. A row of cheap migrant hostels, for example, abandoned because of internecine conflict or simply bad positioning in face of flood drainage can be completely dismantled in a matter of hours and find the components reinserted in a wide range of repairs house extensions, junk markets, and small factories before the day is even over. 
Now, the Maduris are not only the collectors of material junk. They not only just collect screws and steel beams and pieces of wood, but within Chikarang, they also accumulate cheap jobs as well. They won't usually do the jobs themselves because it impinges upon their sense of freedom, but they collect them to be distributed to others. Jobs like porters, janitors, cleaners, and security guards. And you all well know that, you know, in new industrial estates, in new mega developments, you know, you need a janitor, a lot of cleaners, and you need a lot of security guards. And the objective is not so much job placement per se, but brokering connections among different jobs as part of an expansive information network which circulates updates about what is taking place across different factories, construction jobs, internal customs ports and service centers. Such a network not only facilitates just off the truck acquisitions of materials or the ability to offer quick solutions, you know, finding a way that steel beams taken off a construction site can be inserted into someone's new house, um, or to projects or operations face anticipated problems, but it begins to concretize off the grid relations among places and functions. Those that don't fit into any of the prevailing conceptions about how things and places are to be connected to each other. So what I'm suggesting here is that, you know, these, these, these archivists, these collectors of junk, these collectors of jobs, who in some ways parcel out jobs in factories, in new super towns, in new businesses, um, they, they create a kind of information circuit. So everyone at that level knows what's going on all across the region. And in clothes, they know when these come, they know when new bosses are appointed. So there's, there's a sense of the, the way in which the connections between things that otherwise don't seem to be connected become connected in ways that can be used by residents that certainly don't have a lot of assets, don't have a lot of money, uh, but become a kind of production of spaciousness for people that otherwise wouldn't have much space of, of maneuver. So the ways in which, this is the way in which persons of particular background and capacity, they can figure movements of conviviality and exchange with others in their immediate environments to identify common threads of connections, points of mutual and complementary interest, access to different social and administrative and political networks that then sees a particular moment or event through which to deploy this looseness of connections to open up possibilities for what might be able to happen now or in the, in the future. So what, 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 what you begin to see happen in these regions is that on the formal level, on one level, you have this massive extensions of private property, new apartments, new businesses, new industries, a massive kind of privatization of, of space taking place, which seem in some sense to extend and to consolidate and solidify um, the separability of the differences that otherwise make up, make up urban life. But on the other hand, many of these, many of these, many of these things just simply aren't working um, because there's too many of them, because it's not coordinated, and at that level of another substrate where there are these built environments, these different projects, these different buildings, these different things that are only half working, become the kind of playground for particular constellations of residents that don't have many resources, that certainly don't have a lot of political or official power, to begin to repurpose many of these kinds of built environments for uses that were not intended, but for uses that add something to the very viability of things that otherwise are only, are only half working. 
And so this materializing of off-grid relations, it's not to realize unexpected potentialities. And we are live. Pardon? Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I know it has been a long day, and I hope you have been enjoying this amazing conference. Right. And greetings from Orla Izmir. Uh, this panel session is co-organized by Istanbul Lab and Istanbul Research Institute. Mm. I first want to thank all the organizers and especially Tamarit Kantel for bringing us together. Sorry about that. I don't know where that where that came from. Mm. Okay. Um, did I lose my screen? Do you still see me? Yes, sir. We can see you. Okay. I'm just trying to, um, I'm trying to recuperate my, Do you see, do you see the PowerPoint? Hello? Can you still see the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. We can see the PowerPoint. Oh, but it's okay. not a slideshow. Okay. Is okay now? Okay. So what, 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 what this kind, what these kinds of relations of creating a sense of spaciousness they don't concern itself with sort of developing alternative worlds, uh, but rather it functions as a kind of intensive artificiality, even a kind of noise, a means of interrelating things that's not informed by a specific vision or even, even uh, objective. Rather, it concerns the, the, a kind of the intersection of the everyday life experiences of hundreds of service workers and laborers characterized across a landscape, landscape characterized by moving things around, constantly improvising where they might fit, disrupt and supplement operations of, 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 of any kind. So operations such as those do, so we might construe such operations as complicit in the maintenance of macro structures of urban capital accumulation, and urbanization is a locus of advanced capital relations since it seems to momentarily compensate for a proliferation of all kinds of small dysfunctionalities. You know, one can see this kind of operation as a cheap just-in-time provisioning of small affordances, fueling an already hypertensive neoliberal emphasis on everyone having a project and, and in some ways, one could see this as a kind of perpetuation of what Berlant calls a kind of sense of cruel optimism. But what I want to emphasize is that, the, that, that, that in this operation of, of, of the Maduris and their job collection and the kinds of circuits of information exchange and knowledge production and repurposing half-built or half-functional environments, is that rather in amplifying the essential brokenness of the world, of things out of their proper place, no matter where they end up or how they are used, this economy goes beyond repair to highlight how that brokenness suggests its own propositions outside of the need to always restore functionality. So the Maduris, known for breaking the integrity of projects, for taking the screws out of new bridges, or for you know, unraveling the steel beams of, 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 of a new factory, they repurpose elements from that brokenness to dispositions that they have little interest in defining, but rather seek to perpetuate a state of brokenness as generative of a continuous circulation of materials across different hands, different sites, and different, different uses. So in some sense, they keep this game going of the way in which 
all of these new kinds of built environments that only half work or that, that, or that are being built with something might happen. Um, that on the ground level, there's a whole different kind of register of urbanization taking place that isn't interested in necessarily fixing things, repairing things, making things work in a kind of uh, ongoing functional way. But to use this kind of unsettlement, this very process of being broken and unsettled, to rise to long-term possibilities of accumulation and inhabitation, at least opening up horizons for different uses and different ways of, of, of doing things. So I'll end here in the sense that in, in, in my final slide is that in, in this kind of clamor, and it is a kind of clamor because so many different kinds of things are taking place at so many different registers amongst very different kinds of projects and logics at work, generating contemporary urban and adaptation and operation. The question becomes then what constitutes viable modes of political practice that are able to work one's way through these very intricate physical and social landscapes that seem to entail very strange spatial juxtapositions and very different notions of, of time. This notion of time being particularly eventually something will take place rather than any empirical evidence in the moment that something is taking place. So instead of us envisioning processes of urbanization, as the unfolding of definitive forces of value capture or asset creation and resource extraction, even though these things do exist and they are powerfully at, at work, how are they accompanied by a growing multiplicity of different entities and what these entities are, are doing? That is different kinds of actors, different kinds of networks, different kinds of constellations of materials and bodies. And if it's particularly at the extensions, just beyond what has customarily been seen as the real city, it's increasingly evident that a continuous remaking of projects, of material inputs and their remainders, and the altered ecologies of reciprocal causation are making landscapes that go beyond our available vocabularies of analysis and intervention. That is, how, how, do, we, how do we begin to explain the simultaneity of territories that are being created by these very muscular violent and extractive demonstrations of capital and investment that seem to proceed without any sense of what's going on, what people need, or the implications of people's needs, but which only partly work and only are partly viable. And their partialness, and in the way in which they break, particular kinds of existing settlement, creating a kind of sense of brokenness, where that very brokenness provides opportunities, limited though they may be, for a different kind of circulation of material, circulation of work, different kinds of connections amongst people on the ground without a lot of access to resources, that then are put to work in ways that, in some sense for the moment, repurpose and redeem all of those big things, all those big products, all of those you know, big industrial zones where some factories have long ceased to exist and simply become places for storage, but then they become occupied and used for all kinds of 
what we might consider strange kinds of economic activities, that too is going on. It's not that they're completely separate. As, as Sali has emphasized in his own work, these are, these are differences that are, that are extensions of each other. They're interconnected. But how, what kind of language, what kind of vocabulary do we have to really look at those kinds of connections and let alone think politically about what kinds of political interventions might be applied to minimize the possibilities for kind of sustainable inhabitation uh, by the majority of, of residents. And so I'll, I'll end it there and, and thank you very, very much for, for having me. Thank you, sir, for that extremely informative lecture and taking us over the many key concepts of spatiality, like the consequences of brokenness and the interplay between extensions and the broken. We now open the floor to questions. Hello, Arshriya, okay. please go ahead. Um, I think Arshriya wants to ask a question. Arshriya, you should be able to unmute yourself. No? Arshriya, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Yes, Hello? yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, you are audible. Thank you, Thank you professor, for the excellent, excellent and informative lecture. Uh, so, I have some specific questions uh, regarding your regarding your talk today. So, firstly, regarding the uh, possibility of the suburban, uh, since I work on uh, the uh, peripheral regions of Kolkata, and I'm quite accustomed to the field there. I would just like to ask you that um, Ronovic, Professor Ronovic, some of that talks about the possibility of the multitude emerging as a possible and putting political actor to uh, kind of subvert the disciplinary regions imposed by the this, uh, different municipal authorities like the NKDA or the Calcutta Metro and Development Authority. So, and make possible certain modes of inhabitation in the city with your work on uh, people as infrastructure also highlights if I'm not wrong. In that case, don't you think that anthropological work by, uh, by people like by scholars like Akhil Gupta uh, and also Michel Foucault to some extent talk about how enumeration is done and done among the people uh, to kind of create a re uh, regime of governmentality and subdivide the multitude. And that kind of that kind of infers the multitude from uh, emerging as a potent actor for collective bargaining, because the state is constantly dealing differently with the hawkers, differently with the block markets, differently with the janitors, differently with other actors. So, like this is this is a this is a clear cut symptom that I have seen while uh, while doing my field research. And ethnographic work with with uh, the different cl classes of working class people who are engaged in, in 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 the service sector or the peripheral service sector of, of the city. And secondly, when we talk about the when we talk about this bypass route to urbanization, why do we why do we place Kalyan Sarnas work on uh, accumulation by disposition and uh, the understanding of the uh, the postcolonial capitalism, which kind of binds the peripheral region region of a city to the old metropolis to a survival circuit, uh, because uh, when you were talking about the refugee situation and people commuting from metropolis to the new urban fringes regularly, 
don't you think that the survival circuit kind of argument is, is extremely extremely valid and thirdly sir when we talk about the urban middle class uh for second these places or buying apartments and renting them out which i have also seen in many many cases here uh there are uh, there there is a case of mutual codependency that is being developed between the uh, people who are serving in these places as security guards as uh, domestic help and the middle class and also the workers so what do you think uh, is there any possibility of uh, uh, is there any possibility of a collective identity formation in these places these 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 are my these are my uh, clarifications that i would want to make Um, as, 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 far, as far as I could, uh, um, the, the connection was a little bit uh, with static, so it was a little difficult for me to, uh, to understand clearly all, all three. Uh, but from what I understand, uh, in terms of the, the, the I mean, this is, this, the, it, it the, the, the question of the extent to which there can be a kind of arena or, or platform for a, a multitude to enunciate and to, to demonstrate itself, uh, of course, is, is, quite, is quite limited. I think this is why I, I pose the question at the end is that what kind of politics can begin to apprehend uh, the, the the situation that is that is that is taking taking place um, because in some ways the 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 subaltern just to use that term for now as a kind of placeholder even though it may not be very precise it comes in and out of visibility and it has to some ways come in and out of visibility because it's so, as soon as it as soon as it, it attempts to consolidate itself within one particular vis, visual manifestation of what it is and what it can do, it of course faces the in, intense inequity of its own, uh, the, 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 the way in which power is distributed across the urban landscape. So it comes in and out of manifesting itself in different ways at 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 at, 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 at different times, um, which is in in some ways it's both its strength and its limitations, because as soon as you think you've identified it, it disappears and pops up in some different kind of configuration somewhere else around a particular issue, around a particular struggle, around a particular site. Um, and then disappears again. Um, so in terms of our expectations of sort of sustainable political movements, it is very difficult to see what that might, might look like, particularly within these kinds of peripheries, ex ex extensions, because to whom do you appeal? To whom do you address? Where does the power really lie? in a situation which power relations largely remain unsettled, even if the landscape is really inscribed by these massive displays of, of financial uh, uh, force. Um, secondly, yeah, I mean, the, the, the work of, 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 of Nitin Batla, particularly within the, the, the area of Delhi where, uh, is the is the site of the new superhighway between Mumbai and Delhi? Um, certainly talks about the way in which these this bypass urbanism as much re-emphasizes the centrality of Delhi rather than the substantiation of these uh, new territories in their in their own own sense. Um, and so, in, in a way, you have uh, you've had this kind of 
extreme example of accumulation by dispossession and very limited indication depossession within these spaces actually might might mean. Um, and then, you know, from from work uh, of both of, of, of Nitin's and Tanya Chandra in Calcutta and Mia and my work in Jakarta, there, there are momentary ways where uh, the, the, the middle class that has relocated to these kinds of territories um, readily recognize the insufficiencies of their acquisitions, uh, roads that were promised never develop, particular amenities or services never develop. Uh, they often find themselves in the middle of literally nowhere. Uh, and then the somewhere, the somewhere, the kinds of locus of connections then are brokered and negotiated by either those that had been displaced from already existing villages, uh, those that were sort of migrant workers at new factories, but there, there then becomes a kind of level of collaboration on the ground in terms of not necessarily mutual consensual interest, but ways in which they each provides for each other certain kinds of resources, legal resources, political resources, material resources, uh, where there are reciprocities, but all for limited, for limited, for limited periods of, of, of time. Any other questions? I think Anissa has a question. Yes, Anissa. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, oh great. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk, Professor. Yeah, um, I'm audible, right? Like, I don't know, I think I can't hear myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, um, I think, uh, I don't know if you remember me or not. I, I met you uh, at Brown University and that was the first uh, the in-person lecture that I attended. And this is like the last, I think, virtual before I submit my thesis. So this is an interesting round circle. So. I just had uh, two questions, sir. So, firstly, uh, you mentioned a very interesting point about, you know, uh, something broken opens up new possibility, right? So, on taking that on that same light, could you mention if the new possibilities for Kolkata and Jakarta were similar or different in a sense? You know, like, or if you saw any differences, what were they, what were those, or if they were similar? And the second question is. While trying to understand spaciousness, like what happens to play? And this question for me arises largely because I've been reading a lot in terms of the debate between space and place. So if you could just um, elaborate a bit on that, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Hi, Anissa. <laughs> Congratulations, you're almost, you're almost finished then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, I, I, you know, most, most of, most of what I, most of what I, I, I know about, about the situation in Calcutta is secondhand. I mean, I just, I, because it might be fairly familiar to the audience that, uh, that's, that, that is a, a, a around and, and, um, um, and certainly there are there there are there are marked differences in terms of the way in which um, the degree of, of of state involvement within the kind of development of these of of of, of, of the of these areas. Um, so I 
I'm hesitant to to get into the the details of of of, of a kind of more direct comparison. Um, the question around space in place of this course is really is really is really a, a significant one because um, that even even when so. What I'm trying to suggest here is is that in there his, historically there was in many in many urban situations across the South a kind of implicit compact between particular districts, neighborhoods, communities, and the state. And that compact was basically this: that the state said, you know, you. You put something together. You put your own machines of accumulation together. You create employment. You create ways of doing things that are able to basically get you by. And as long as you don't create too many political waves, we're gonna we're gonna leave you. We're, we'll leave you alone. As long as you don't politically rock the boat, then this is was this was the kind of compact. Um, in most situations, that compact is over. And therefore, you don't have, you don't have these kinds of territories of operation that are largely place-based. These kinds of districts no longer can absorb the amount of labor and the amount of livelihood needs that are demanded of them. That compact is over because, in some ways, the this, this state is, is is like my friend Gautam Ban said, you know. The state is looking everywhere, and it, it looks hard. So nothing is off. Nothing is off the radar, um, and so people may want to be left alone, but they're having a hard time being left alone. So if these kinds, if these territories of operation <clears throat> are less place based, what happens? Well. You circulate. You 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 on the move. Um, itineraries itineraries of movement become more important than localizing yourself somewhere. But you still need a place to sleep. You know you need still need a place to eat. You still need a you still need a place to park your things. Um, and where and where do you do that and under what circumstances do you do you do that so place doesn't disappear it's just rather that emplacement takes place across more multiple sites emplacement operates more as particular nodes and launching pads rather than destinations rather than culminations it doesn't mean that everyone is moving Many people are stuck. They're stuck with that house that is decaying after that flat that's decaying after 10 years. They're stuck having been evicted from their self constructed home to these, you know, vertical towers that, you know, barely, barely, barely operate. It doesn't mean that people aren't stuck and, and, and frozen in some ways in, in place. But if you can, and if you have a choice about how you're going to spend your time and whatever resources you have, increasingly that goes to, to the circulation. But that circulation needs an infrastructure. I mean, in, in Jakarta, that wouldn't be possible unless almost everyone, and I mean literally almost everyone, converts a part of whatever they have into rooms for rent. I mean, this is this is this is a, a, a massive infrastructural affordance from the upper middle class to the poor who may have a shack with two rooms. You know, it's not uncommon for everyone to move into one room and you rent out the second one. So this is some example of this kind of ongoing dynamic between a sense of space, having room to maneuver. 
and the reiteration of place, but place under different sort of circumstances with different kinds of functionalities. Does that sort of get to what you were asking or is there other dimensions that you want to talk about? No, I think. Um... Sorry, Nisha, you're muted. Yeah, this is this is new, this uh, platform for me. Yeah, yeah I think you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you covered most of what I wanted to understand because then that ties down to the whole question of infrastructure. And um, that is something that I'll be talking about in my paper because this idea of movement, circulation, yes, but also the idea of pause, idea of restriction, you know, like what happens when things get restricted, choked. So that is one aspect that I'm exploring in the paper that I'll be presenting. Yeah. Thanks so much, Professor Sim. Yeah, no, Nisa, it's very important to keep that, you know, the, 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 the notions of stickiness and being stuck yeah. and being, you know, that's in, in always important to, to, to pay attention to. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah. And again, Thank congratulations. You. Good to see you again. I haven't submitted it yet, but yeah, I'm on my way. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get it done with this pandemic. Yeah, but thanks yeah. anyways. <laughs> okay, Nisa, yeah. Nisha, I think we can take a couple of more questions, Professor. Yeah, sure. Um, anybody else has any questions? Any more questions, anybody? We wait for a couple of minutes. Um, Professor, there's a question um, in the chat box. Read it out to you. Yes. While homogenizing the broken at various urban centers with complex speciality and temporality, how to define the scale for a particular city which needs to get redefined beyond the Western defined scales and patterns, as cities are very different to each other? That is the question. Can you can you can you just run it by me one more time? I, the, yes, sir, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. While homogenizing the broken at various urban centers with quality and temporality, how do they find the wealth of The, the, the problem is, is that you you're cutting out, so I I don't get the question. Is it in the chat somewhere? I I don't see it. Yeah. Um, oh, um, you should be able to see it. Yes, it's there as well. Um, uh, if you just click on uh, this one, yeah, you should be able to see. It. Mm, it's not there. I'm sorry. Um, can we try one more time? It's just that you 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 cut out completely, so I only heard the first two words. Uh, I'm just gonna send it to you. Okay, I see it now. I see it now. Uh, but now. Yeah. I How to how to read it, how how to define the scale for a particular city, which needs to get redefined by Western. Yeah, 
I mean, I think, I mean, I think this is that. I mean, I think this is this is this is somewhat what I'm trying to suggest is 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 taking place, partly through the very kinds of itineraries, in the way in which people are 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 moving and circulating throughout throughout urban regions. Um, to to think to, I mean it's just this is not this is not this is not the entirety of 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 what you're asking I'm I'm sure because it entails also kinds of tools of of governance that are able to in some sense think about the ways in which different kinds of spaces within an urban region uh, could be articulated to each other what kinds of connections that they they, they might have. Um, but I think also these kinds of connections are also being in some ways made through the very movements of, of people as they try to circulate, as they, as they seek particular kinds of opportunities for, for income, opportunities for uh, uh, even temporary residents, Trying to understand what's going on in the in the larger uh, urban space, where things are happening, where things could happen. Uh, so, if you can you can imagine, you know, large numbers of people on the move. These kinds of movements are themselves practices and in instruments of of rescaling. Um, that's why I said through the, the individuals through their own bodies are 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 aspects of of this sort of notion of 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 extensionality. The ways in which different kinds of networks are are put together, um, and so I think that that's that itself is a kind of rescaling. Um, a, 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 a rescaling practice. Um, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't lessen the 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 fact that one still needs to think through about what it means to govern, you know, these sort of large extended urban urban regions um, that are oftentimes made up of scores of different kinds of municipalities, local authorities, uh, oftentimes not talking and dealing with each other. Um, oftentimes the, the proliferation of particular kinds of instruments of, of governance and development that are beyond public accountability, um, like what I cited earlier in terms of special purpose vehicles. Um, um, but some, somehow the, 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 the kinds of circulations that are underway are in a response to uh, the increasing kind of fragmentations of, of urban space uh, and the way in which those fragmentations become both a kind of problem to be solved, but also a kind of opportunity to be seized at the same time. Any other questions? Uh, good evening, Professor. I hope you can hear me. I can. Okay. So, I mean, this is a thought that I had on reading the last question that you answered. So it says, uh, how do you define a scale for the for a particular city, moving away from what you understand as restaurant concept? So, uh, what I understood from the question itself was, uh, would be the territorial jurisdictions or boundaries of the city at large? But I sort of want to rephrase it in a different way. Uh, why can we not think of multiple scales within a city? Because if you look at uh, the kind of beat for governance, you do have multiple scales where people can get whatever uh, work they want to be done within their locality. It, it could be the local corporator who does some work for you. It could be the local self-help group which comes sit together, do work. 
or it could even be a government project which comes there which has all these connection to the national or state go governments which does a work in the city so um, how, how would you you know what is your uh, thoughts on that when when we define city not as a singular scale but multiple overlapping scales few would be very concentric few would just be overlapping and sort of very like you're defining it not as a singular scale but multiple scale Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the, there's several things going that go on th at, at the same time. I mean, there is the, the 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 entire notion of scale, meaning that somehow the the one one neighborhood is nested within a kind of larger district, and that district is nested as part of a of a larger administrative structure of the municipality and the municipality is scaled as part of a nested and part of a larger region and each of these scales has its own particular kinds of competencies its own kind of authority uh, its own kind of responsibilities and so you have this this kind of structure that's imposed meaning that one thing is part of another thing is another thing and 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 in a kind of uh logical order of, of nesting uh and certainly that's the kind of conventional way by which things are governed um the difficulty is, is that urban systems are are not really on another level scaled in that way um it's about all kinds of you know, sort of wavy, uh, non-linear lines of connection across uh, very much differentiated landscapes, uh, all different kinds of uh, uh, relations between human, non-human materials um, that are not 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 easily scaled in 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 that in that kind of classic sense i mean you know some decades ago the there was this whole notion of of how do you manage space most effectively and judiciously and so we have this notion of subsidiarity which meant that you try to bring down to the level of the of the locality as much as you can uh, in terms of decisions in terms of administration in terms of services and it was, and that was sort of the the the, the ethos of what would constitute effective management. And to a certain extent, it 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 to a certain extent it it works. It's it's viable. It's practical. But on another level, it it it, it assumes somehow some kind of coherence, some kind of some kind of intrinsic connection at that at that at that local level. Um, and and that's not really it's not really op, really not really operative, uh, or if it was operative, if it was that you know you 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 live in you live in a place you work down the block the people you know work in the area, uh, you all complement each other in terms of your relations and your your neighborly relations you take care of each other. Um, you believe in the same things, you look after each other. Even if that were the case, these kinds of scales at, 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 of, of, of locality um, tend to have been, as I said before, broken, broken up, no longer, no longer, no longer operative. Um, and so what does that mean? You know, what does that sort of local governance really mean? um i think this is this is this is this is a really this is a really important important connect important process i mean a, a really important kind of question um so it's not simply a matter of how the the urban territory can be effectively scaled uh but rather what kinds of lines can be drawn amongst different parts of the city in ways that enable people to feel that they have are exposed to what's going on 
have access to sufficient resources and information to navigate and make use of those lines and have something to and have something to say to say to say about about them and thanks for the thanks for the question because it, i think it remains uh, a critical question Um, I think there's one question on the Q&A box. Um, are you able to see it? I see the, I see the one that was asked before. Uh, I don't Correct. see a new one. There's one on the Q&A box. Okay, I'll... Oh, the Q &A I... box. Oh, okay. Let's see yeah. where's the Q&A box. Um... Um, it should be on... If you see on the right bottom corner, you'll see three dots, and you'll see, and if you click on those three dots, you'll see a Q and A box. Switch audio, lock meeting, copy meeting, enable breakout sessions. No, uh, oh. not that. Uh, oh, not all that. the oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Notes. Yeah. Notes. Notes. I Session see notes, pulling and closed caption. You don't see Q and A? No. Okay. Uh, I'll probably read it out to you, Professor. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, my office. Yeah. Yes, uh, Davis. Yeah. So I just read out my question. Like, yeah, there was a bit of noise. That's why I couldn't unmute earlier. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's slightly vague. But uh, you're talking about property having to be continuously like productive, right? Like uh, people use it in multiple ways. And uh, I mean, it can, it's also a productive resource. So I was thinking whether there could be a link to like George's thinking here. And uh, I mean, property, if it's separate, if it's different from land, uh, like then how does it work? How, how does thinking about productivity work in both like cases? Like, is it like, can, do you think of land separately and do you think of property separately? And yeah, especially like whether there is a link to like George's thinking about to whom the value that is being produced belongs. No, I mean, I think, I, I, I think, uh, I think you have to, I think you have to, you have to think differently about land and, 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 and property. I mean, uh, and if you if you if you take Sally Benjamin's work on this, this is you know he really does this better than almost anyone else in in terms of of demonstrating the ways in in which land can be overwritten uh, in terms of multiple kinds of inscriptions, multiple kinds of designations, multiple ter multiple tenures. Um, that in some sense um, lessen the force of particular property property uh, property relations. Um, the I mean, the other the, the the other the other aspect too is is in some sense what is what is land, um, and I think we, one has to extend the notion of of land uh, across different kinds of domains beyond simply what we understand to be the kind of the 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 earth, you know, that that sense of land. I mean, to what extent are sort of virtual domains also an aspect of 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 land? Um, what happens to relations of, of verticality where in some sense the the land on which the vertical tower is built has a whole series of different kinds of relations than the floors of, above it and 
and so in 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 some sense the 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 attempt to extend property beyond notions of land i think also require extending land beyond our sort of familiar understandings of what land is as also ways to discover different kinds of different kinds of instruments to deal with notions of of, of property um I mean, and 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 these kinds of issues are particularly important when it comes to those those projects whereby communities or collectives attempt to build uh, new kinds of residence for themselves in a in a collective way, and the kinds of struggles they have in terms of then well who. Who owns what we've done, uh, and 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 what? How is the value of my contribution going to be measured in terms of what I've contributed? And if I have a particular residence that my family lives in, and then I want to pass it on to to others, you know, what do I do? You know, within a kind of collective. So it's the, it's this it, it, it does become an important kind of issue in, in terms of if you're going to envision the the development of new modes of inhabitation uh, away from simply um, the, the 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 notion of the freehold or or, or alienated property. So I think that. In some, in some ways, we, the, the relationship between land and property itself has to be extended in, in new terms and in, 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 new, in new directions. So thanks for the question. Thank you, sir. Slightly faint. Um, can you speak slightly louder? Yeah. Am I audible? Is it better now? It's if it, yeah. I think this is fine. Okay. So, uh, so thank you, sir, for your tip. My question is, uh, well, this concept of spaciousness. Uh, uh, how do you? Uh, how can you draw this? How, how can you apply this concept as to questions of the uses of you know common natural resources, common property resources like say you have wetlands or lakes? So the in the, in the case of Cambodia, you have this whole uh, legal issue over over uh, people being evicted from uh, near the Warcraft Lake in in, in, front, in front there. And the whole issue, and the whole, uh, the, the, the whole issue has been going on, uh, going there right now. And as well as, you know, if you take examples closer to, I'm from, I'm from Kerala, so uh, here we, I mean, it is a, it's a, it's a uh, topic of discussion about, you know, a paddy land and you know, wetlands are being converted because of urban development, and there's the whole question of. I mean, it's it's not a simple issue of you have these elites. Uh, 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 my, uh, uh, more, you know, there are these powerful real estate groups coming in and you know redeveloping all the land and turning it into big apartment complexes. It's, the issue is much more complicated than that. You have issues of land ownership and tenure and dispute, land disputes and all coming into place. So how do you, uh, if you understood my question, how can you connect these two uh, issues? Common resource, common natural resources, the biodiversity and the uh, concept of spaciousness. No, I mean, on, 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 on the one hand, what you're suggesting is, is in, in some sense, the whole process of, of 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 land 
of land conversion into a kind of platform for this kind of fractal formulaic uh, repetition of sort of standardized built environments. Um, that that conversion takes place, as you rightly suggest, through in a kind of complicated process. And what I was trying to suggest at the outset of the talk was the way in which the, the vulnerabilities and contestations amongst existing relationships of inhabitation uh, get um, get those content those conflicts become instrumentalized as or converted into vulnerabilities in such a way as to expedite the kind of uh, agglomeration of land, it's parceling, it's, it's agglomerated production. Um, and, and so what's, what's being abrupted are, you know, in some sense, very compl complicated uh, ecological relationships uh, in favor of a certain kind of homogenization of, of, of space um, under the auspices of providing a sense of spaciousness and a new frontier, uh, a new mode of belonging to the world, a new sense of unimpeded freedom. Um, and, and so in a way, by, by trying to, um, to override those kinds of ecological arrangements, to simpl simplify them, to extract from them, to erode them, um, is, a, is a substantial reduction of, of, of the spaciousness that I, that, I, that, I, that I talked about earlier in terms of, you know, if, if spaciousness is a sort of maximizing of relations of difference, um, but inse inseparable ones. So an ecological relationship is an inseparable one. It's a relationship between human and non-human entities and particular kinds of natural processes. Um, this kind of spaciousness is being effaced in terms of, in favor of a kind of invented form of spaciousness as a kind of new frontier, new frontier of inhabitation, of accumulation, of finance capital, of, of, um, of free reign. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I think this is the, the, it is one mode of spaciousness being replaced by another, which, whose effect is really to reduce the kind of spaces of operation that are, that are available, uh, particularly if one sees the kind of uh, the urban as a kind of metabolic system um, that exists not simply by or for human residents alone. So thanks for the question. Thank you so much. Um, I think we can close with that. Um, Sharanya? Thank you, sir, for that. Uh, thank you all. I would once again like to thank Professor Abu Malik Simon on behalf of the annual academic conference of the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences IIT Madras team for spending time with us this evening. We will forever remain grateful for the valuable time you spent with us this evening. Thank you to all the participants as well.